This is God promising to give Abraham the land that they're now going into. And what he did to perform this ceremony, to sign this contract, was to tell Abraham, sacrifice some animals and wash them and then lay them out in two parts in a row on the ground. And so Abraham does this and then God puts him into a deep sleep. Now, what would normally happen in this situation is both people would walk through the path between the animals and each person would recite their end of the bargain. They would say, this is what I promise. Just like we would do in our contract. I promise to give you this money and I promise to pay it back to you under certain terms. So when people would make a peace treaty back then, they would do this oftentimes. And the reason that they walked through these dead animals as they gave this promise is to say, if I don't fulfill my promise, then I deserve to end up like these animals. That's how serious they would take it. Now, in this scenario, only God walks through the animals. It says that a fire walked through and God recited the promise to him as the fire, which would resemble the light of God. And so God walked through the pieces of the dead animals and recited this promise. So he was promising, I will do this. I will give your family this land. I promise you that I will. And if I break my promise, I deserve to be dead, which, you know, God cannot do. But he's trying to convey, this is a serious promise that I'm making to you. And in this specific situation, Abraham didn't have to walk through. God asked him to make no promises that were dependent on God making his promise. Because if I break my promise in the contract, then that frees the next people to break their promise. They don't have to fulfill their end of the bargain if I don't. And God didn't want Abraham to have to do that because God wanted to give the land and he knew that people cannot fulfill a promise to him. They will break it. They will mess up. And so he said, it's not contingent upon anything that you do. I am the only one making this promise. And so that's a cool example of what it looked like when people would make a promise. And then it also shows us as they're going into the promised land, how seriously God took his oath. So it's important for the people to take their oaths and their covenants seriously also. And then the other reason and the biggest reason that they had to keep their oath is because they made it in the name of the Lord and they could not make God out to be a liar. And that's why it's best just don't swear by the name of God, right? Because we don't want to be in that type of situation. In Matthew 5, 33 through 37, it says, you have heard that it was said of old, you should not swear falsely but you shall perform all of your oaths to the Lord. But I say to you, don't swear at all, neither by heaven because it's God's throne or by the earth because it's his footstool or by Jerusalem because it's the city of the great king. Nor shall you swear by your head because you can't make one hair white or black. But let your yes be yes and your no be no. For whatever is more than these is from the evil one. And so our word should be enough. We shouldn't have to have God's name to add weight to our words. Because when we do that, what happens? If you ask someone to promise something and they say, no, I'm not going to promise that, then you know they're lying, right? And then if they do promise it, you have to question everything that they said that they weren't willing to promise. Or if they didn't add that weight to it by saying, oh, I promise this is true. And so we don't want anyone to question our words. That's how we add weight to our name. That's how our names become important is by being trustworthy, by people knowing we tell the truth. And so... We don't want to use God's name to add weight to our words. 
We just want to be trustworthy and true in our own selves, where people know when Courtney says something, it's true. You don't have to wonder. You don't have to wonder, oh, well, she didn't promise it to me, so maybe it's not true. She didn't swear by the name of God, and so maybe it's not true. We don't want that. Proverbs 22, 1 says that a good name is to be chosen rather than great riches and loving favor rather than silver and gold. And so we know how important a good name is. And if we want our name to mean something, then our word has to mean something. And so that was the first thing that I thought of. And then I was thinking about what it does to God's name, why they couldn't break the promise. What would it do to God's name if they were to break his promise? Leviticus 19, 12 says, You shall not swear by my name falsely, nor shall you profane the name of the Lord your God. And so, are your words trustworthy and true? Can people trust you? Do your words carry weight? Do you follow through on your commitments? Do you do what you say you're going to do? Can people trust it? And then do you respect the name of God? Do you realize the weight that his name carries? And do you make sure that you're not doing anything to profane his name, to taint it, to make him look bad? If we make an oath in his name and then we go back on it, then we make him to look like a liar. But I also thought about how we just bear his name. I don't have to invoke his name in an oath. I'm invoking his name by saying I'm a Christian because that means I'm a Christ follower. People know what that means. And so if I invoke his name by saying I am a Christian and then I don't act like a Christian, I don't follow God, I do things that are contrary to what he would want me to do, then I taint his name. Then people look at me and they say, if that's what it means to be a Christian, then I don't want any part of it. And then I have made people reject God or distance themselves from him all because I have tainted his name. And so these are things that I was thinking about as I was reading and how I need to be more careful revere his name, realize how important it is to bear his name and to speak his name and to make sure that my words and my actions line up with that just as best as I can as a human being. In Leviticus 22, 31 and 32, it says, Therefore, you shall keep my commandments and perform them. I am the Lord. You shall not profane my holy name but I will be hallowed among the children of Israel. I am the Lord who sanctifies you. And so by following his commandments, we uphold his name. And by not following his commandments, disobeying him, doing things our own way, we taint his name. 